Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Dire team ban. <laughs> Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <sighs> Dire team ban. Radiant team pick. Shadow Fiend. Dire team pick. Duska. Dire team pick. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to move over to North America as the Summit 4 continues here. Greg, we've got a rematch of the Nanyan Lower Bracket Finals. DC yep. versus Unknown. Nanyang. Frankfurt. Uh, what am I saying? Nanyang. Frankfurt, yeah, of course. <laughs> I need coffee. Production, help. Fred, please, coffee. Fred will more, more caffeine. I just need it intravenously. <laughs> anything, maybe a little bag. If anybody, if any here. coffee companies want to sponsor BTS, definitely, we, we need coffee. Yeah, well, we'll, last time they... we'll pretty much do anything for it. <laughs> Almost anything. Pretty much anything. <laughs> Almost anything. The, so the last time these two teams faced off, Unknown obviously took it and qualified for a major. Yeah. For a South American team. DC... Did not really play like a real team. They choked. I mean, I mean let's they be serious. Choked. They, they, they didn't fell apart. Win when they should have, they didn't push when they should have. They just waited forever. Uh, but I wonder. So part. I was thinking about this game this morning, and I was wondering if part of that had anything to do with pressure. Because if it did, maybe they'll play better here. Because this is the no offense, but I'm sure they were under a little bit more pressure. Oh come on! The summit's a big deal, Greg. <laughs> Get out of here. This is way more important Dire than team band. not Nunyun, but Frankfurt. <laughs> All right. Traps underway. Let's hop into it, guys. Game one of a best of three. This is also the upper bracket match, so okay, you yeah. lose here. It's not the biggest deal. It is double win. So yeah. Le def definitely a lot less stress. Now, that said, they might also be more on tilt after Nunyun. Not sure. Oh, yeah. They might actually all hate each other and play like Five shit. That is also another possibility. Definitely something that's happened with a lot of teams. Oh, yeah, that definitely happens. Historically, <laughs> so. Can confirm. We shall see. All right. So, look, what do we got here as far as the draft goes? We are going to see Tuck's first pick, which is, I think, good, but that I've... hero had been going really late Wait, when these teams played each other in their last series. Yeah, and Zetok, probably the main... I think he's the only player that played it in that series, and he did a lot of work. We saw Buryu Spirit Breaker mm -hmm. in their previous series. He did pretty well in that. But uh, how are they going to run this? Is this possibly a Bulba Ten Tusk, or is it meaning. something that the supports are more likely to play, do you think? Mm, I particularly... I like it in offlane much more, and plus I don't really see either of those heroes being that great for AUI. Unless he played like a farming wyvern, but I don't know. Which we did see one game, yeah, but I generally mean, it's I mean, been Buryu on okay. it. Ten but generally Buryu plays the wyvern, and I think that Tusk is a good hero for Bulba. It allows him to create a lot of space. Uh, it has a pretty high skill cap, and Dire Bulba I think can hit. take advantage of that. You can obviously use Snowball to dodge things pretty efficiently. Uh, I think I would like to see this be Bulba's hero. Okay. Yeah, I agree. It's it's quite similar to Clockwork in a lot of ways, and that's yeah, the hero exactly. that we all know what Bulba can do. So, DC going to a TA. I am loving their drafting compared to some of the picks that we saw. And the War is actually drafting now. They've switched again. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so interesting. Started as Buryu, then it was AUI, and now they've switched to UR. Oh, okay. Apparently, we were muted. Our production woes continue. Are muted. Are we still Are muted? We still muted? Rob, we're still muted. Uh, oh, we're, we're muted in X-Split. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, our producer is a hot mess right now, guys, so I apologize. Um, yeah, if you would like to report your, your love of the production value of the stream, at Ice, Ice Element, Element, shout out to him. I thought we had a nice uh, intro there, God. too, Greg. Yeah, we had, some, we had some deep insights. Yeah, in some, like, some, you guys will never gonna know, uh, what they're about. Some, some decent jokes about Frankfurt and Nanyang Yang and the summit, and... You know, we even revealed the secret to Dota 2, and now you all missed it. Remaining. But, alright, so, back qu away in quickly the recapping the draft, I think we both agree we like this Reserve a lot better time. from DC compared to what they were picking in the yes. Frankfurt major qualifiers, so Tusk, a, a suitable replacement for Clockwork, also a bit more versatile, has true stuns, not just the hook shot and then cogs, which you can blink yeah. out of. Uh, so we both like the Tusk pick opening a lot. Uh, they go into a Wyvern, we were wondering, will it be an offlane Tusk? I think... I'm in agreement with you, Greg. It's a bit more likely Bulba plays the Tusk, but still possible it could go either way. I love the TA grab, second phase, good against Shadow Fiend. They're dire, they can rush easily. Unknown going with a Venomancer, which technically could be a core if they want to run him safe lane, though the one core Venomancer performance I saw was an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> there is no Alk or Doom this game, which, I mean, to me, actually lowers the stock of the Venom by quite a bit, since being able to just feed him the eggs from Alk is quite strong, so. I'm not a huge fan of the Venno here, but it does give them some damage over time to control the TA. So anyway, that's the very Cliff Notes recap yeah, of the our other, draft The analysis. other thing we did mention is that UR is drafting for Digital Chaos now. So they've rotated drafters yet again. Do we also have music going, Rob, or did you manage to... Okay. okay. <laughs> oh my god. So UR is drafting now. During the end of the qualifiers, it was AUI, and uh, it was were you before that so obviously digital chaos have not had the results they've been looking for in the last mm, you know month and a half however long it's been since the ti shuffle they haven't really qualified for anything uh and their performance has been lackluster so they're still switching around there with their roster and trying to make the best of it you know a lot of people might have expected them to disband or to have roster changes already um which could be possible but the thing is that most teams are going to be waiting until after the major concludes, because presumably you would like to get some of those players who were at the major on your remaining. team. So Agreed. Yeah, the, a lot of the talent that you may want to put remaining. together is not going to be available until the major ends. So, no reason to disband now. Plus, the Reserve summit happens time. after the major. Probably yeah. that and WCA, the two big events uh, in December. But obviously, WCA qualifiers are over, so you're either going there or you're not. Um, yep. So this is the main event for these teams still to play for if they don't get to Frankfurt. Uh, yeah, I, I believe your tournament may be the last thread that is hoarding, holding some of these NA teams together, David. Might be uh, the protector. Oh, chat's reporting me. Ported and fired, and... Um, Why you? I'm a, let's see, I am a... Rat-faced retard. <laughs> I, give that like a, I give that like a 5 out of 10. It's like, okay, yeah. That's, that's yeah. okay. Thanks, chat. I love you guys, too. Glad you joined us here for the uh, the show. So, Broodmother fifth phase ban. Something that I guess they definitely could have fit in. Now, I say that because the supports have a lot of team fight control, Tusk and Wyvern. So, I think the Broodmother ban's a good insurance policy. They are awful against Brood. Clock is probably one of the worst offlaners to catch and punish a Brood. Battery Assault does nothing against the spider lanes. You can easily have your hooks blocked by spiders, and they have no other catch. So I definitely like the Brood Ban here. Very straightforward. Fifth phase. Protection. Five seconds I'm still not sure about the Venom. Sam plays Bolo, or God. Sam plays uh, Brood Mother quite a bit, too. So yeah. that's they haven't, for whatever time. reason, they haven't gotten the hero very often, but definitely capable of running it. Yeah. Oh. What did DC want? So they go on dying. So it right. is, in fact, going to be a. Probably a farming tusk here. I guess it could be an offlane farming undying, but the lanes are pretty much set now. You're going to have your tusk undying. Possibly even could, could go aggro with the gyro if they want, and then do like an undying gyro wyvern. Run a tusk safe lane solo. I guess the it's not too appealing running that into Venomancer and Dazzle, but... Uh, I actually don't love that idea very much. But I guess you can, if you have undying, then you can kind of Ten beat anything maybe. depending on how your decays go. That's true. What's Unknown get with their last Five grab here? So far, really their only control, as far as stuns go, is Clockwork. I That's their offlaner. I do not like Venno if it's not core when you don't have an Alchemist on your team, because I feel like if you Ten can't really remaining. farm It takes so eggs, long to farm eggs. Useless. It really does. Five getting the eggs early is just remaining. so much more impactful. 
I'm honestly surprised they even went for Venno, but okay, Necrophos coming out now. Man, this is a team that needs an Alchemist, eh? Yeah, I know. I feel like this lineup is like one of the few, like, to me, Necrophos and Venno are the two best heroes to rush the eggs on, because the Necrophos all is just crazy good. <laughs> That's a game-winning eggs upgrade, and yeah. Venno we've seen the strength of it from Secret before, so. Did AI get banned in this draft? Kind of curious. You can tabs on that hero. They can run it. Unknown, honestly. Even if this is a tri lane, it's Dazzle, Venno, Necrophos against Wyvern, Tusk, Undying. So maybe like a Tusk, Gyro, Wyvern lane? Or. Yeah. Let's see. I don't think Digital Kiss has to go aggressive tri lane. They can go for the dual lanes here. Gyro, very good at handling a clockwork. Uh, they could even do Tusk, Undying, Wyvern, because I don't think Gyro needs help in that matchup versus remaining. clock. No, he definitely doesn't. Unless he gets really sloppy with losing all his Five mana and then caught by battery. Yeah, so. and you and then you like run into the clockwork. <laughs> Both of those things would have to happen. And uh, well, it looks like we are underway. And have we Prepare have we straightened our lives out? Battle. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm aware that I'm observing Rob. Some of us, some, <laughs> some of us are aware of our responsibilities during the cast. <laughs> Dumpster. Other people still haven't gotten me coffee. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright guys, Summit for America. Here we go. Unknown taking on DC, a rematch of the Frankfurt Major lower bracket finals. <laughs> DC will be looking for revenge. So it is the Bulba Tusk that we talked about. They're not going to go with the full-on aggressive tri-lane to try and punish the Necro pick. Instead, it's like we'll see the dual lanes out of DC. So they get a ward down, blocking the pole camp. We'll have the little skirmish over the bounty rune, and we'll get a little swagger to wake everyone up here. Bright and early on a Thursday. Thirty seconds to battle. All right, well, it looks like it, I I don't I don't think that DC. Should what, play what's top going on, this. Rob? It's from the Shadow Fiend taunt. Pretty sure it is. <laughs> Sp spam taunt more. Dance for me. We already knew that, Rob. The battle begins. Yeah, it's from the Shadow Fiend Taunt. <laughs> it's really annoying, actually. <laughs> oh, God. So it's 1v1 mid. We're going to see the standard builds for both players. Get the pool tango, start with your Wraith Band, and then carry out a south. So everything stock and standard here, Greg. And of course, as standard as can be, because we have a pause before the game even begins. South American Dota requires their... And pretty much all, all American Dota requires a pause at the beginning of the game. Otherwise, you're just not doing it right, so... I think this dual lane bottom could pretty easily actually just kind of crush whatever ends up being safe lane. I mean, Necro is not exactly a strong la laner at these early levels. No, he is very squishy. I would have been shocked if they went into the aggro try. I'm uh, pretty down with this dual lane, though. But this is a strong dual lane, so yeah. you really can't argue with it. Pretty down. Necro is definitely going to need backup. Then. You are is actually going to get wrecked mid, though, if more help. Man, no skill out yet from the Venno. He's going to skill up the Gale, and they're starting to commit onto Yuar. He has Refraction, though, so they force him to go into it. Doesn't get the side blades, which a lot of players prefer for the harassment potential and just safe farming. Level 1. Refraction will be chewed through. Still has the offensive charges, and well, things will settle down here. 2v2 in the mid lane early. Though, so, now yeah. the Venno is finally rotating out, so the lane will get a little bit easier for Yuar, but I think they know they need the, the Venomancer in the bottom lane. If not, Bulba and... Uh, AUI could easily stomp all over them. Yeah, Dazzle, I, the heal bomb can be really potent when they roll on you, but if it's just the two heroes, it's not that scary. TC, he'll go to work in the top lane. Ryo taking a pretty big pounding there from the rockets. Back off. So early, slow start here for both teams. Just straightforward matchups. Um, that Rob is laughing. Yeah, yeah. every time Rob laughs, I'm it just makes like, me nervous. oh god, what like, has he? What did he break? What did he break this time? <gasps> oh, Battlefield is taking a lot of damage mid. Cyblade harass going to work here for you are so he's figuring out a way to bring this land back a little bit more into his favor. He has a whole nother south coming out because of the Venomancer harass he took early on, and just trying to successfully get to the bottle here. Bottom rune, it's gonna be a double damage. Nice grab by Zetox, but still gets caught out. Do they want to engage into this? Gale on both. He might actually be able to kill Bulba, but eh, a little bit too slow on the damage. And now the snowball comes through. First blood. DC. Nice rotation. The power of the 
Tusk Undying dual lane. Yeah, I mean, these two can Rears basically just kill on demand. Bulba's gonna get killed by Roche here for a free trip home. Yeah. A nice start. Things looking smooth, the mid lane. Even trade, more or less, you are getting slightly more of the denies. I don't think that's bad deal. news for him, though. Uh oh. He's dead. Yeah. Good rotation by Zetok. Hey, the, the power of being really low level. Insta respawn TP mid, and Yuar does not have the hill ward that we often see. I think this, this sentry just got dropped by Zetok, right? So, yeah. Uh, I don't think Shadow Fiend actually had a hill ward. Been so distracted by all the shenanigans, though, that not 100%. No, he didn't, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Alright. Let's think, focus, Greg. Just for a meld. meld. I think they thought that he was going to try to get out of it by melding, that's why he turned back around. Yeah. So. But Iwar does not have well, a meld, and he does actually seem to avoid getting it for quite a bit uh, in the games that I've seen. Well, say hello to the pain train. As expected, Tusk and Dying just rolling fool's bottom. They do get the heal off. Bulba's gonna snowball onto this. Grabs the kill. Now, Sar forever. Try to turn this. So, I guess they're using one stand in here, not playing with their normal safe lane carry. Yeah, that's what. Or it, is this him? I mean, it might be him name. with a different name. I guess is the problem. Can, I can try to investigate, yeah. but who knows? If that's it's the work. caster's no. endless plight. Don't think this is the same person. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's just standing. Yeah. So yeah, as expected, the Tusk and Dying Dueling getting kills, but the Necrophos is at least farming, so it's not all bad here. They swing around on the UR. They've got a Gale available. It does connect. Level two now. Raises begin to come out, no refraction available, it needs to get the long range raise off out of mana, but Zetok there to finish the kill. Good coordination from unknown, and now, oh, what do you know, delicious regen rune waiting top. Honestly, this there's not even that much that they can do to really help you are against this Venomancer until Buryu gets a little bit more levels. Because, they could carry a TP on the Tusk or the Undying. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much their only option, but... Even if the Venomancer, even if they don't like dive him, the Venomancer has points and poison sting now, so pretty soon he's just gonna be able to chew through the refraction, and there's not really gonna be UR, much of what UR can do in this lane if Venom stays. And he's really posting up. Raise out, UR taking a massive amount of damage, still no bottle. He's actually getting wrecked. Yeah, he's just. Here, here's the help that he needs. 10 and 11. It, it might be too late though. There comes the snowball, they need this kill desperately. Shards coming through. As the raise available. Actually, he didn't have the short range raise that he needed, so... Well, nice attempt by the Venno to turn it, but it is a three hero rotation. Green up the Necrophos a bit, allowing Ryo to continue getting his levels. Already oh, level five in the off lane against the Gyro. Now, generally, this is where Gyro gets scary versus Clock. You get the call down, but they're going on mid again. Zetok, he stuck around way up on the hill. That is got, super got cocky. cocky. Because Yawar was low HP. I think he thought Bulba left, but... Bulba's still in the vicinity and just reinitiates on them, and that gives you our decent uh, little way back into this. Now, like he has the bottle coming out, he even has four tangos, so hopefully this lane will get a little bit easier for them. Uh, they, I think they just have to keep rotating though if the Venno comes back, because you are getting shut down this bad is traditionally um, really, really bad for for DC. Digital Chaos generally doesn't play that well when Yuar gets shut down, so he's kind of their their playmaker when you look at all the other players on the team, they're much more conservative. Bulba's the other big Bulba one, is but only on one. certain heroes. Yeah. But I think Tusk can be one of those heroes, especially if he gets a good start. So Ryo's gonna hit level 6 soon. Generally this is where you'll see a support take over the clock's lane, and they'll rotate and start ganking with the hook shot. So let's see, who's an easy grab here? TA definitely a kill if you get some backup. Tusk, uh, not I so much. Gyro, but he has to be away from the tower so he doesn't get mm, rotations. It's pretty risky with Call on Rock Barrage. I think he's like the last hero you want to go yeah. for, to be honest. Even Undying's a potential kill if you hook him. Undying could definitely be a kill. Dyer's middle mm. towers you are now tower. farming up the woods, Etok. Slithering through, wants to scout out, see if there's any big stacks, or otherwise what that pesky Templar assassin is up to. Yeah, and there's not really. They also do have an Observer Ward down over by the Ancients now. Wow, uh, the classic aggressive style rotation of the Gyro. He rotates onto the bottom lane. To get the first kill, Grave, TP out, uh, no Snowball. So he'll make it home. But meanwhile mid, they're prepping for Yoar. They've just seen the three hero rotation. They know this is the time to go. And no TP on Yoar, so he can't get out of this. Double raise, I'm missing a pill. Really want to give the Shadow Fiend that kill, and they will. One more raise secures. Fortunately, Venomancer gets the kill, so no souls, but he is already at Oh, he didn't actually- anyway. I thought he got it with the last raise. Nope. Really? I guess it, the raise it came is, through as he died. Yeah, I think- yeah. They really tried- like, Zetok even stopped auto-attacking, yeah. but yeah, it was the Venno. That's- 
It's not the end of the world, but it is a bit unfortunate. I'm already going to take the tower here. Super fast here on mid. Bulba yeah, not in position to stop it. Shadow Fiend gets the last hit. Things looking good early on. Bottom tower so, is Digital Chaos, attack. they're just trying to get as much harm on a TC as possible. The, I mean, the good thing about Gyrocopter is he is one of those carries that can fight early. We just saw that with him rotating bottom. So he's not going to be useless. Where the Necro, on the other hand, is not incredibly useful for quite mm. a while. In team fights, Death Pulse does give you a decent amount of AoE heal for your team and a little bit of damage. Oh, they have a lane ward. SR forever. He is going to back off, but waited a bit too long there, I feel. Bulba had vision and rolled on him, he was dead. They, they've seen that he's going Midas, and they want to punish this, but now it's complete. SR forever, off to the jungle he goes. Give the lane to the Venna, who's also building what could be a Midas here. We're going to see a double Midas. Shadow Fiend will reinforce the early game fighting potential with a quick mech and DC. See, have they been stacking Ancients? No, they've been warded. No, they haven't st They haven't stacked anything. It's, for it's unknown, normally known for their aggressive early to mid game, who are going to be playing the Greed game. And... Yuar has gotten no help beyond that rotation, and still, he's starting to come back into it, but he's he's getting absolutely wrecked, man. I, I'm just worried because, traditionally, we've seen Yuar, like, be the damage dealer in the mid-game, and he is just so far behind, he's not even close to any major item, he doesn't even have treads. Uh, yeah, I don't know, DC just doesn't seem to give Yuar very much help a lot of the time. He does get jumped, but there's a call down waiting for this. They still get the quick grab on the TA. Now Ryo trying to scramble his own retreat. There is a Winter's Curse, and they do use it just to help secure the kill. Meanwhile, a super long-range snowball. Can't believe Bulba has a range for that, but he does, and it turns around. DC get a lot grabbing two. Two cores for a TA. It is another yeah, death for Yuar, but at least they get the trade for the team. Yeah, they get some decent value over that one. They're going to pressure mid-tower. Unfortunately, the Radiant are taking bottom fairly quickly. And seems like Unknown actually have a little bit of a better game plan to me than Digital Chaos. Digital Chaos are still kind of just wandering around, trying to get some pickoffs. Now, finally, they're grouping up. The Tombstone cooldown is long enough, though, where you can still fight against the Undying now. I mean, 60 seconds is quite a long window. Oh, Vano getting caught out. He got off an okay Gale, but... Doesn't seem there's a whole lot of backup for it, so Buryu is allowed to just flap away. And they do manage to take tier 1 bottom while that's happening. Last hit going to the Necrophos, so he's getting fat rather quickly, up to 1400 gold, and perhaps wanting his point booster now. We'll see if the Ags Rush is the choice. Yeah, I mean, I guess the other option is just like blink first, but... Alright, once that bounty room, give me that! Hey, UI. This the clock victim. is making a lot of space. Yeah, this is, this is a clock who got a ton of levels early versus a gyro. Normally a matchup where I've seen the gyro get solo kills, but... Able to hang back, Ryo, and then starts turning things around in the mid game. TC did got no levels in homing missile, which makes it kind of usually a lot easier to set up some of those solo kills. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be the reason why nothing like that happened. But TC did get very good farm, and the clockwork did not get very many CS. But unfortunately, the clockwork really all you need is to get level six. So and now he's hunting. So the pressure. Maybe coming towards DC soon with no ancient stacks for the TA, with UR being slowed down a lot, and a um, double Midas under construction. Necrophos is already completed. SR forever. Oh boy, he's in trouble. Clock is going to come in. Does rocket the TA, but that's right, the snowball rolls through. Great Winter's Curse, as well as a cooldown. Holding one hero back to grab the first kill, then damaging Ryo, and they want to chase forward. They have a Walrus Punch at the ready. Uppercut. On to Ryo. Looks like he should drop as well. Two down. It could be three. Grave on the Dazzle. And no TP out available. DC. Bounce back. Getting the triple kill across the team. DC. Very, very fortunate to walk into that fight with five heroes. And they're just going to continue this five-man pressure. This might be the best solution to the fact that UR is under farm. Just put him in a five-man ball. And use the fact that he does still have quite a bit of damage with plus 80 bonus damage from Refraction. And now he has a ring of Aquila as well. So that's another 18 damage. So. And they can also look to Roche quite early here. They yep. don't have the medallion yet. But if the whole team walks into the pit with Undying there and Daz... Or, uh, sorry, not Dazzle. And the Wyvern there to help heal the team up, then... They they can probably do it. Perhaps we see them wait for a medallion to be safe. Yeah, and you are up against the clock, so you want to be patient about it. But the openings yeah. are there. Also wait for another level or two in meld from Yuar. That could help them enough. Is know. that the first time they tried to stack the Ancients? Yes. Okay. So wow, 12 minutes. Boarded, but 
taking them quite a long time to be able to do anything. I mean, I don't really know exactly where Buryu has been. I think he's just been kind of hanging around in lanes. Because he's quite a high level, but he still has like no farm and he didn't stack at all for you are uh, like we sometimes see. Now Z Talk Midas almost complete. Ryo continues to prowl about. Alba in the jungle is going in on S far four forever. He has missed the ice shards. He's got stick charges, and I think he may live here. AUI trying to finish it with the decay. The grape comes out now. The hook to turn it, grabbing PC with a caught on already committed. This could go very badly for DC. Looks like the Necrophos barely ended up going down in the end on the retreat out. The tombstone will be dealt with though, and they get the counter kill. Now, a headlong retreat. AOI 2000 scrambling back, Bulba TPing out, and... Yeah, this is where their lack of real stuns hurts. Need that Necrophos ult. I'm not sure what he's saving for me. Does he want BOTs? He might get Blink first. 1800 gold. Yeah, Blink is... I'm just trying, like, there's not many items that a Necrophos would build that you don't, that you don't have a component by now, but Blink and BOT is probably the two. Yeah. I think BOT is so greedy, though. I think so. it's more likely a Blink. I, I definitely agree. I don't... I don't actually think BOTs is the item, but yeah, I don't think so. A necrophos with 2,000 gold. <laughs> Start to ask some questions. A little extra HP there, he would have lived. But now, Midas number two. This is pretty much the only way for Sport Venomancer to ever get to the Aghanim, so... I understand the choice, but obviously buying a Midas later than, you know, a couple minutes into the game. Like, That's a pretty game. fast Midas but for Sport Venom. But it's Venom, it's, eight, it's only 14 minutes, and... I like Midas here. At the same time, I also like DC being aggressive now. As yeah, DC has figured out, I think, that they can supply pressure with this Undying, and they're going to try to do. Well, if Necrophos does want to blink, he's almost got it now. SR forever, up to 2180 gold. Looks like that must be the choice. It has to be. Oh, they are going to try to take Roshan here with the Flesh Golem, amping up some damage. But well, they get scouted out immediately. Are they going to stay in here? Seems unwise. Oh no, Unknown don't have Poison Nova yet. Zetok has not opted to skill it. I don't think they That should. seems like... Fighting this without Poison Nova is super risky. This is the Blink on Necrophos. Good call there, Greg. Chip out of the jar. Oh wait, there's no jar. Jar is gone. Rest Rip. in peace, jar. For the opening here, Ryo. God, he's being no. scouted by the Dire Squad, they get a homie missile onto him, he's almost ready to jump in and they're gonna move the Shadow Fiend forward. He's the man in front, carrying the mech as well, call down comes through, it's only gonna connect on the Shadow Fiend, but they curse him, preventing the mech from coming down to a beautiful grave by Hoshimiki, he looks to turn this Requiem, does come out the hook, on the UR, trapping him in the pit, deleted from the fight, down for 70 seconds, and now TC in danger as well, the Shadow Fiend death Requiem doing additional damage, TC will drop also, and up on the high ground, trapped in and out of in a horrible position, frankly, is Buryu. Now, SR Forever Ryo. I need to finish this off. Can Buryu get back in there in time? Arctic Burn, still a 10 second cooldown. He's gonna be too late. Digital Chaos wrecks in the pit. Without even having to use Poison Nova, unknown. A big Take part of fight. that is that TA gets brought down from the fight very early uh, and the gyrocopter was just never really in optimal position to take that fight that they also had to deal with the venomancer wars which were just all over the place around the pit which is so obnoxious because you obviously you have to leave the pits so you run past these wall of wars they slow you they do tons of damage and it's not a, not a great fight for dc i think maybe i don't know it felt like they should have been able to win that with call down and undying but they got a one hero call down shadow fiend Still I was guess, graved, got off his mech, yeah, got I off the double really requiem. Really was. They used their curse and SF lived. That's you need to, like, ideal situation there, you save the curse for when he's a little bit lower, but you have to get the dazzle as well. Just a well executed play on honestly. And I think yeah. the main thing here is not having, a not having like, enough damage to just quickly bring down Roche, I guess. Even though they have a medallion, it took a while for them to finish the job. They're just gonna continue putting pressure on bot lane. Yoar is back to farming middle, trying to get some kind of item together, and it does have an ogre club, so... Yoar is... he's been... it feels like he's picked up where he's... BKB first? Like... I wouldn't even say he's been tilting this game or anything. No. Like he, he hasn't been, he hasn't been done horribly overextending, but it's just another rough game for him. Yeah, he's just been getting wrecked. Like, they camped the mid... like, a Veno camped you mid as a TA. That's probably the worst thing I can think of. Yeah. Like, your fraction is just useless. You don't have a lot of HP, so as soon as your refraction's gone, you just die. Like, pretty rough. 
I don't think there's really any worse support. Yeah, I can't think of anything I'd be more unhappy about. Support gyro is pretty obnoxious. <laughs> That's yeah, but, yeah. But then he just runs at you, can at least back off. I know can hit you from pretty long range with yeah, the gale. Plus, yeah, plus there's just wards. He didn't have wards when he was camping him, but oh, so many. So many obnoxious things about that. I mean, is this where DC need to be? The other thing that I, I really like from Unknown was the emphasis they put on shutting down the jungle game. The Venomancer of Z-Talk, to me, he's been really impressive on his just game... It's like his decision-making and general gameplay as a support. He knows what DC want to do with their draft. So he wards off the Ancients. He also stacks their jungle to make sure the TA doesn't have any extra gold to fall back on there. And in addition to applying pressure mid. So I, I think that's where credit is due to the, his support Venno. And he's also managed to get a Midas. Is, you are no teleport scroll out mid. This is a mistake. And he's going to get punished for it now. The hook comes in. Tries to turn, but with a blade mail up on Ryok, that is a disaster waiting to happen. And wouldn't have been able to make it out anyway with the TP, but just no. out too far. No tier 1, no backup, and the TA struggle continues. Looks like they were going to maybe try to kill Z-Talk, but gets himself in a position where they have to die very, dive very far. And I do wish Unknown had a little bit more catch. I think getting a quick Agnims on Clockwork is going to be very well, that's, helpful this game. That's where the Necrophos can build towards a Hex, and then he's a Blink yeah, Hex true. with an ultimate eventually, but it's going to be a little while before he has that 3200 gold. Now our cows yowling as well. It is a weird day here at the BTS house. <laughs> Oh boy. I, I, I'm calling it train wreck Thursday. I mean, it's. I haven't been here for the whole thing, but it seems like it's not going swimmingly. Craig, since you came here, everything's been better. You're well, saving, you're saving that's us. It. That's it. Space that's scourge. DC still smokes, looking for something, but. I don't have to make quite the wraparound. They actually might get the Necro here, but he does have an Aegis. Curse. Is there going to be support from Clockwork? He can interrupt this initiation. Max is not too late. They sack the Shadow Fiend. I think the right choice in the end by Ryo. With no Dazzle there, you're not winning that fight. Not the case, and Necro was also heading in the other direction, and he's going... Octarine? Who? Yes. I mean, I guess he could be Bloodstone. Bloodstone, Bloodstone Necrophos is pretty legit. I would be okay. side. I would be. I would be surprised if it's getting an Octarine and reducing the cooldown of Reaper Scythe seems sweet. I think it's definitely a part of his late game kit in the. And if you don't need a ton of defensive items, but my thing about Bloodstone on Necro is like, what are you real? I guess you're spamming Death Pulse, but I feel like Octarine provides you with a lot of that. H there are a lot of that mana you need anyway, you know? It's just a it's a snowball item. You know, you tank up early. The, having the really low respawn and being able to delete heroes later on is quite powerful, so... I, I would definitely agree he's not, like, the ideal Bloodstone hero in terms of having huge mana cost, like a Let's Tracker Storm. But I think a lot of the other aspects, the non-regen related ones, are still very valuable for Necrophos. We'll see, though. Octarine is possible. If I had a chip, I would bet he's gonna get Octarine. You think so? Oh, yeah. I get reducing the pulse to what is that? Four seconds? That's yeah, pretty that sweet. also seems pretty sweet. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I guess I can understand the. Bulk Actually, stuff, that's so. that's pretty strong. Seems, it could be. It seems better than. Let's like Bloodstone. for me, more so that, that and less the ultimate. I feel like now that they took away a lot of the extra stuff on Bloodstone, just not. Uh, it's like fine, but I would still only I would only get it on here. Oh, you are, you are, you are. What a poor fella. They want to break through the fraction. Now they go with the oh, Necrophosal. Deleted again, down for 45. And now Bulba trapped in the Ancients. Who's going to take the fight here? Buryu has a curse ready as far forever. Engaging, gets heal out. The blade mail redeployed as a call down comes from behind. A perfect one by TC. Hits three heroes from the rear, but still they can't really fight into squad. And courtesy of the Necrophos, everybody continues to heal up. Yeah, they're too tanky. They have a mech, they have a dazzle, they have a necro, they heal forever. This is why when you see a Necrophos who rushes a Midas, you really have to punish him before he gets his first big tank item. Because at that point, unless you've got a ton of bursts, he's always going to be able to keep the team alive. And he's definitely, definitely did that. You are going down there. The only bright side is that I don't think he actually died to the Reaper Scythe. I think he died to the auto attack after, so... Yeah, he didn't have the he, plus yeah, 30. So, he, so he's just, he's back up right. He's not dead for another 30 seconds. I mean, we're really stretching if that's, we're calling that I mean, a silver that's lining. A, yeah, that's a silver lining. He's behind the support Venno's net worth, and he's great. right there with the clockwork. You are 3 and 7. Again, it's like he's not playing. He's not that playing aggressive. Badly. He's, he's farming ancient. Camped. He's just—he's getting camped. <laughs> he's getting Good camped. warding by unknown, and he's being punished. 
dude. And he's even going for the defensive grab here, picking up the Ogre Club, BKB the choice. A TA with just the BKB treads, though, it's, it's a here you can pretty much ignore if you're ahead of her. Clockwork has the blade mail, they've got the mech, they're all quite a few levels. You really need that damage item. Really make that impact. And on Greg, TA. you were right. I lose another Give chip. Give me that chip. So 3.75 second That death seems pulse. really good. Crazy. And because we saw in the last team fight they healed up really fast. Now they're going to do it even faster. And the Necrophos is going to be harder to kill. Damn. I like it. I'm on board. All right. Bloodstone, I think, should be... You're dumpstering me today. I th You're I stuffing mean, me just... in there. You are the Necrophos god. Apparently. Two for two. Octarine. That's a Gurg build. Like when I play Earthshaker, I go blink heart. Uh, for the big enchant totem. Yeah, for just enchant totem and smack them in the I face. I miss when Shadow Blade was more. Oh yeah. More like had the better just uptime, better, and you yeah. could go for the uh, phase boot Shadow Blade, yeah. either Deso or just Daedalus build. That was, that was the dream. Yeah. Well, DC are gonna group up again. They've got AUI Gyrocopter top and the TA. Attack. Okay. They're gonna try to take down the top tower, but looks like Unknown are pretty willing to let them do this. And we're finally getting a little breathing room. He is muscling that tower down, but the Benno eggs almost complete already. This is going to be brutal. It's the TP complete. Ryok engaging. Call down, baited out. It's going to hit him once. Now the blade mail gets popped. Great hog. They've committed so much, and he still has a hook shot. He can catch them on the way out, perhaps. They need to be careful. Boba also in a bit of danger down in the river. Blinking forward is SR forever. He's in the middle of two heroes. Boba Snowball. In trouble. Boba. Yep. As the dead, Bulba <laughs> and, and they make sure it. to delete him for 80 seconds. Yep. Oh, go, go grab yourself a drink. Yeah. Take a load off. Go make a sandwich. You are out of this game, Mister. What an unfun mechanic. That's God. like it's like a power play when you ha when you <laughs> use that. It's like a hockey power play. Yeah, that's. Just have like that like a minute or more where that hero is literally not allowed to play. AUI has had a good impact on the beginning of this game, but we'll see how he scales forward. Now has 1,200 gold. I wonder if he's going to be going for Ags. Egg seems incredibly good on on dying. It's just getting there is a bad buildup. He can't really farm, so I don't understand if he goes for another item. But it is extremely powerful if you do manage to complete it. It might be their only way to actually like out DPS this healing lineup is get a bunch of strength steal so they can't heal. Still I just feel like the lo the problem for me with that item and with undying in general. This oh hold the thought top. Where are you caught out there? You want a long fight, and I just feel like Benno Necrophos win the long fight. Yeah, that's true. Oh, so, I I don't know. To me, it's just a bad matchup for. A, I mean, well, a I, I think you really only need like two good decays if you get an eggs, because that's minus almost that's minus 380 HP per hero. That's pretty good. Plus the damage that you get out of it as well. I don't know. It just feels like it's going to be really hard for DC to ever fight into this because they have that mass heal, and now that they have. An Aghanim's Venomancer, almost. It's, I think it's on the Not so much a weave, like... And they don't have that much physical damage, but eventually they could. As a call down comes through bottom lane, it's again Ryok looking to hold structures for the like, squad. It's him, though. It's like, alright. They see him blink in. Like, imagine this is a tier with a blink death, so they just jump that clockwork and kill him. But instead, yeah. they watch him TP, and at least they get the tower. And one thing we d I did actually want to bring a little bit of attention to is... Buryu has definitely done a better job this game of farming, but... It at least kind of appears that it, it might be at might have been at the cost of your success in lane, because he's much more farm than he normally is at 25 minutes. I mean, but I mean his mid laner got wrecked, so is that worth it? Although I'm not really sure there's that much he could. I'm not sure that was the plan, but because if you like cold embrace him or something, you just shadow fiend just kills you. So, he just raises you, yeah. and the. So yeah, it's like, can he even help you that much, really? Not really. I'm not sure there's a whole lot more Yuar could have done. He actually started mid. He he tried to help on the yeah. first wave, but Benno just Benno just brings Benno's more just in that matchup. That, yeah. In that matchup, yeah. If it was like a pure right clicker, you are or uh, where you could have done a lot there potentially, but yeah. I'm mean, unknown are basically just taking over the map right now. They're pushing into Roshan and in full vision of the Dire. They um, don't give a crap. Yeah, they, I mean, they have to know that the Dire know they're in Call here. down is available do. as Shadow Fiend gets bashed. But that's a call down now committed. Yeah. Nobody really suffering too much from this. SR forever. Slowed down by the Sigil. 
but still very tanky. And now the long range hook comes in, pushes back AUI, very nicely placed by Ryok. He wants to hunt towards TC. Elsewhere, traps getting thrown out in the pit. The zombies ushering the clock back a little bit, but Roche not yet low enough to be stolen as Bulba waits for an opening. Very you still has a curse. Both yeah. teams, the dance continues. I think that Unknown are just a little hesitant to finish Roche right next to that Winter Wyvern, because obviously you can just Arctic Burn <laughs> right in there and curse you and really mess up everything. So they need Ryu to create a little bit of space around the fight, which is what he did earlier. That's our forever, starting to drop low. Gotta be careful about not getting cursed. And he will be cursed as Bryu jumps in, snatches the Aegis. Sick play there from the Wyvern. So it will cost him an Aegis and possibly his life again. I, this is not, I mean, it's not, he's gonna die now with neck royalty too. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's still worth it to I deny guess. them the Aegis. But I, I'm not sure that that Aegis is gonna be the, the difference maker. Like, first, I think Unknown's just gonna run at their base now. I feel like they still can. I they don't like have was... to though. They can just farm. They've yeah, got double true. Midas. They've Shadow Fiend. TA is so shut down. I think they have their they options here. Farm, yeah, because they're pretty that far ahead, and towers. the Clockwork almost has and you want, eggs. And you want the Necro Eggs, which is about to be delivered. Okay, now things are scary. Oh. A that 28 minute Necro fast, with an though. egg. This is their standard, mind you. As he gets caught in the river, he's gonna turn and possibly even kill up TC. BKB gets popped though. Oh, they may lose SR forever. Where's the Graves? Just out of range. Hoshimiki, he almost had him. He Graves Detox is dead. Now they may lose three heroes. Uh -oh. oh, this could get ugly. Even Ryok into the fray, but the Venowalt was. Did they did get the Venowalt off? Pulse out of TC. That'll c complete the kill there. Shadow Fiend. Oh, is AR gonna tick down? It's only the Poison Nova. He will survive. Now Bulba scrambling. Bulba maybe makes it out. No TP though. It's gonna be a long time before he gets home. So that's a they salvage right spot for DC. Bad thing is that TP uh, at the end of that fight. But they get a one for three, and now finally Bernie is just respawning. Oh my god. That necrophosal. That necrology is so ridiculous. Clockwork has a completed agonims now as well. That's big. Yeah, that gives them a little bit of extra catch that they needed. It gives them extra stuns in the team fight. Now that his ulti is going to be on a much lower cooldown, all the way down to 12 seconds from 55. So multiple uses in the team fight should help them quite a bit, especially also against BKB uh, Gyrocopter. Gives them a little bit of extra something if they want, if they need to fizz them down or something like that. I think now that they have this next round of items, their five man is is strong enough to go for high ground. Go ham. Not like there. Yoar doesn't gone. have a damage item yet. TC still doesn't hit that hard. Plus, there's a ch very good chance that you'll be able to kill the person and disable buyback on, you know, whichever hero you choose. Yeah, so. ideal scenario is get a pick and then go, but honestly, I think they're strong enough. They could just go, hookshot somebody, commit everything with a Necro ult, and probably come out in good shape. Yeah, I mean, if they burst TC, then what can DC do to really defend their base? He can BKB to dodge the Necrophos ult damage, but if he doesn't get it off, he's so royally screwed. Yep. They may find Zetok, but that is like the worst here to grab, unless you chain stun him and prevent the Veno ult from coming out. He's pushed back, the shards on the wrong side, trapping Golba away from his team wall. Hoshimiki's down in the river, he gets caught out, and now the double damage Shadow Fiend arrives, Curse, but doesn't have a whole lot of follow-up. They will lose the Dazzle, re-engaging his SR forever, the heal's gonna come through, hook shots there, Necrophos ult deployed, as he gets pushed oh, back down no. for a hundred! Great combination, another good pushback from Ryok, and now Burr, you melt. Out to drop here to the rocket. Heartstopper are not even required. They only lost the support dazzle. Curse was extended. Dyro out of the game for 90 seconds. Time to push, baby. Metal on the metal. It's time to go forward. Definitely gonna get it. I feel like they're almost for sure gonna get a tier three out of this if they push. Uh, so AY has gone for a solar press, but now he's going for the Aghanims. Yeah. I, but I do kind of, I mean, the thing is that I'm not sure you really need that long of a fight. I'm, the, the Ags is really broken. I think like two is all you need. And if you level up the K, that's only eight seconds. Oh my God, that guy is just. The good news for Undying is there's only one hero that's got a lot of stuns. Unfortunately, the bad news for DC is that that one hero who's got a lot of stuns is making full work of them. Constantly getting good initiations off here, setting up for the Shadow Fiend as they breach the high ground. Gale comes out, Tombstone was deployed, looks like Riot may have over overextended, will end up going down, but they clear out the Tombstone as the trade. SR Forever has his ultimate ready, can pretty much kill Bulba right now. 
And yep, that's Bulba down. 80 seconds, no Bulba. SR forever taking some damage, but Requiem will mitigate it. You are committing for this, doesn't get the kill, and they're gonna grave him, turn in the fighter on the Necrophos hold up in only 40 seconds. The frontliner, Shadow Fiend, swarms forward. No buybacks available. Unknown. Looking strong here in game one again. Use the stand in, pick best hero, win the game. I mean, I don't know if it's actually the best hero, but that was a pretty impressive Necrophos performance. And generally, when we see Necros go Midas, teams very much look to punch them, but he got Midas. He kind of just did, was able to do his own thing. And that one rotation bottom where Bulba got caught out a little bit. Oh, Winter's Curse comes through, but it's on, only on SR forever. He's got his ult up in 10 seconds. Oh, TC God. may end up going down on the way back to the well. They could delete the Dark Hunter again. Almost don't want to kill him just yet. Wait out the BKB. Oh, yeah, Four seconds. <laughs> they're waiting. They're taunting. And done. A hundred seconds away. <laughs> The swag on this team as they stomp through DC again. I am an unknown fan. Unknown is winning me over, Greg. I'm now an unknown fan after that. Dropping items in their base. <laughs> Just taunting him death like, next to I, You are going to stand here until my ulti is off cooldown. He's doing a little, yeah. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Oh, you man. ready to be deleted for 100 seconds? Get ready for it. Wait for it. Gotcha. I love the symbols. Oh, my goodness.